Alrighty, so I was supposed to do a news of the week video yesterday, but since I was relatively tired after my evening ship, that's why I decided to do the news of the week today. And honestly, there really isn't a lot of news that happened in the past couple of days, and I kind of thought about not do doing one because of that, but still, I, I, I thought, you know what, might as well just kind of do one since I don't think I did a news of the week last week, and, you know, since the MLS schedule has been so condensed in these last couple of weeks, I haven't got a chance to really do a news of the week video because I have to do previews, reviews, and then previews and reviews, like, like in a short amount of period, and really, after this video, I have to do the preview in terms of looking at the weekend's game where we're going to have a very busy Saturday game action where there's going to be 12 games that's going to be happening that day. But for the weekend's action, it does kick off with the, the first game. And oh, by the way, it is Heineken Rivalry Week and that these next two weeks, we're going to see some of the biggest rivalry that is going to be happening around MLS. And this is always one of my favorite time of the MLS regular season. And to kick off Heineken Rivalry Week, we got the LA Galaxy versus the San Jose Earthquakes, and I decided to kind of include that as the quick preview because if I would have done a include that game into the 12 game that I'm going to be previewing on Saturday, it will take take too long long for me to. Well, it will basically by the time I upload that video, uh, the game will already started, and there's really no point of doing a a preview of a game if the game have already started. So that's why I decided to include it. In this where you know it's a quick preview of the galaxy versus the quakes you know the quakes they have are coming into this game with their nine game unbeaten run on the line against a galaxy team that fresh off of a 2-1 loss that they suffer at home home against um, against the Colorado you know, Rapids and uh, by the way the last time the quakes actually lost a game was against the galaxy I mean it's been a long time since the quakes have lost a game it's, Hard to believe that it's been two months since they have lo lost a game. But that being said, despite the fact that they are on that nine game on Bean Street, they've drawn seven times out of those nine games. And hence, that's the reason why they're still below the red line right now. And they're still one point uh, below the red line. But that being said, you know, let's see if they can maybe get some revenge against the Galaxy, who, of course, of course, uh, that that game was really kind of the game where, where I thought the Quakes really hit rock bottom this season, where, you know, they were all already near the bottom of the table but to lose against your biggest rival and to get embarrassed at home like that let's see if they can maybe get some revenge heading into this game against the LA Galaxy who is looking to try to get themselves back in in winning ways and also trying to fend off third place too because there is also a team called the Colorado Rapids that is very hot on, on their heel right now but moving on in terms of the the next news now we kind of did a quick preview in terms of the Kennedy Classico is that LAFC have signed Julian Gaines and traded 50,000 general allocation money for the top allocation order to Toronto FC. So this is a, a guy that, you know, he's still relatively young. He's only 18 years old. But LAFC decided to sign him because they are very short in terms of option in, in the back line. And I think he's going to go immediately to the Las Vegas Lights, which is LAFC uh, affiliate. In fact, I think he's already ready with the team right now. But obviously, LFC decided to sign in case this is kind of like almost an, an emergency kind, kind kind of situation where in case if there is another player in that back line for LFC goes down, uh, he's probably going to have to slot it in. And again, you know, this LFC team, they are really shorthanded in terms of the back line after what ha happened uh, a couple of day days ago when unfortunately they have another pl player that in their back line that might be missing game time and that of course is Diego Go Palacios. But Montreal, uh, moving on to the next news, has waived goalkeeper Clement Diop. Now Clement Diop, he's hasn't been been with the team for a very long time. Last I heard about Clement Diop is that he is actually taking taking an absence of leave and he decided to return to his his home home country friends to deal with some family issue and from there we never heard heard what's going on for him and to this day we still don't know what's going on with his situ situation maybe it's I think it's kind of a personal situation where Montreal decide not to kind of re release it but at the end of the day I think maybe Montreal kind of feel like yeah you know I feel like maybe he's not going to come come back to the U.S. so they or in this case come back back to Canada I know Montreal fans are going to be upset that I called it than the the U.S. But 
that yeah, you know, they decided to kind of wave, wave him now, and you know, I wish Clemente up the best, and wish whatever he's dealing with that it is it is the best because you know I feel like as I said last time he we heard from from him with Montreal was taking an an absence of leave, and it looked like it was something to do with family issue. And at the end of the day, you know, as much as football is definitely very important to these players, family is always going to be first. And I, I wish Clement Dia the the best right now and that if he does get get that sorted out let's see whether or not if any any team would decide to claim him off of waivers because Clement Diop is considered one of the best go goalkeeper in the league but it just feels like this might be a situation maybe he won't even come back to MLS and he just decided to stay in his home country that is France. Now the Philadelphia Union ha had signed Olivier Baizo to a multi-year contract and well he deserved because I thought Baisel this season, you know, it was always going to be a tall task for him to try to replace the shoes of Ray Gaddis, and I thought he has done relatively well so far for this season, and hence that's why the Union decided to reward him to a multi-year contract. And also, moving on into the next news is that there's some good news if you're a Seattle Sounders fan. As Brian Schmitzer, the Seattle Sounders head coach, have said, Jordan Moore's recovery period is ahead of schedule of that torn ACL that he suffered on the loan move in Seattle. In Swansea back in February and you know obviously with with ACL injury it usually take about a year to to recover but if Brian Schmitz and the Sounders feel like Jordan Morris is ahead of schedule you know maybe just maybe they could could bring him back th this season I mean because his injury happened so early in in the season actually not even so early into the season this was before the season actually begin there is still a chance that he maybe could come come back like maybe in November or even in De December if the Sounders does reach the MLS Cup again but that being said I'm pretty sure sure uh, the Sounders is going to kind of take the same approach that they did with that Atlanta United took the, the approach with, with Joseph Martinez where you know I know there was some speculation that Martinez was going to be back in in this team but they ne never deci decided to bring him back and let him rest for an offseason before coming back with the team. Now, that being said, that Atlanta team uh, in the latter part of the season was pretty much out of the playoffs. Will this will be the same situation? Well, it won't be the same situation with the Sounders because we know they're definitely going to make the playoffs. But if they do make a deep run, how much will they will they gamble and decide that, to bring Jordan Morris back? Because, you know, Jordan Morris, this is not the first time they suffer a torn ACL. This is the second time they do so. And although, you know... Ideally, the Sounders feel like Jordan Morris is going to be just as good as he he is. He is coming back from a torn ACL injury compared to the first time. You know, you don't want to all, to to just rush him him back and, and decide to play him there because the last thing you want is to just rush a player back from a torn ACL injury, and and that and that he could he, he could re injure that if he do, does decide to come back too soon. But as of now, it seemed like the Sounders feel like. His recovery schedule is ahead, ahead right now, but we'll see whether or not if he's going to be back with the Sounders for at least near near the near the playoff time or even during MLS Cup. Now Josie Altidore is undergoing foot surgery, which you know is bad news for TFC fan, but good news is he's only going to be out for six weeks, so it's really just a minor foot surgery that he's undergoing, and and you know it's just getting to a point where where yes, even though he's also going to come back back from this team from six weeks is this kind of the time where you know is Josie outdoor there's always that big question of is this really his final year or is this it for for Josie outdoor and I thought it was it when when he decided to to pretty much no, no longer uh, be part of well not no longer be part of this team but decided to train on his own and kind of had that that dispute with Chris Armas and I thought thought TFC was probably going to sell him to another club but it seems like he's still there but because of the way that he's been suffering so many injuries and he's also getting up in that age you wonder is this really the final year for for Josie outdoor for TFC and now watch how it's not going to be the final year because it feels like we've gone through this 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 process again where we think that that Josie outdoor time with TFC is now over and then he's basically resigned to a new new contract with Toronto FC now the bad news for Toronto FC though is uh, besides the Joe's the outdoor injury 
is that Ralph Prizo is pretty much done for the season with an ankle injury. And I thought Ralph Prizo has done very well stepping in into the star 11. Obviously, he's kind of forced to because of the fact that TFC was battling with so much injury. And he did hit his best in terms of covering for some of the players that is currently on the IR. But now it seems seems like, like if TFC is going to go go through another injury crisis like they did in the beginning of the season, they're not going to have Ralph Prizo as one of their backup option. As again, he's going to be done for uh, for the season of an ankle... Well, not, not just an ankle injury, but also he's going to undergo ankle surgery that is going to be put him out for the rest of the 2021 MLS season. Now, uh, MLS Disco has fun. Austin FC assistant head coach for explicit language tour Matt official, and I believe that assistant head coach... Uh, oh, God, I forgot what... What was his, his name again? I actually had his name when I wrote down the notes on my notebook, but I forgot to put it here on the board. But I just kind of want to mention this because I did mention back in the review between Austin F FC uh, against... Oh, who were they? They, they were playing... Uh, not not This was before the game against the, the Vancouver Whitecaps. Oh, God, I can't really think, think of of the team off my top of my head right now but right near near the end end of the game there was a red card that that was shown as i mentioned in the review and i thought you know it was a red card show to a while the austin fc player that was on the bench and it turns out it seems like it was actually for the assistant head co coach and you know he of course unsurprisingly did wasn't wasn't in in the 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 game between between the Austin FC and Vancouver Whitecaps it was suspended but it seems like this coach decided to further punish him by the side to find him for for using explicit language toward a match official and you know I understand that doing that game when Austin was was losing and they were definitely very very frustrated and especially with the way that I actually didn't mention at the full time whistle the the full time whistle was blown right as Austin FC was about to take a corner that is definitely a very strange and probably not a great time to blow the full time whistle, especially the game is still up for grabs, and hence that's why you can see Austin FC was very frustrated. Though the assistant head goes kind of crossed the line a little bit, and therefore that that's why he kind of got that red card and also now getting getting a a fine because of it. But moving on into the last news on the on this board is Raul Ruiz win player of the week. Again, for the second week in a row, and also I decided to not put the power rankings from last week because, you know, since we already had a match week that happened in the middle of the week, the power rankings are pr pretty m much not, not ki kind of, of um, the power rankings are kind of pretty much useless because the, the power rankings only, only judge on teams that, that play during the weekend's action and also so in, in the middle of the week. So if I would have just put the power rankings, it would have been completely different from heading into next week because I'm going to have to pretty much just say, well, this power rankings does not include the performance that teams ha had during the middle of the week. And, and you know, I'm pretty sure the power rankings is going to change once again next week. And it's also going to upset a lot, lot of people again because that's what the power rankings is for this season where it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And the only reason why I put it there is just to let people know what's the top top 10 and, and, and pretty much get upset and get angry in the comment section below. But speaking of that, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys do like, smash the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of, of the news here on the board. And as always, if there's any news I didn't mention here on the board of this News of the Week episode, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time.